Welcome back to sleep. So, um, today we're going to talk a little bit more about the neural basis of sleep, the parts of the brain that are important for sleep. And this will lead nicely into our next video, in which we'll talk a little bit more about um, sleep disorders and how things can go wrong with um, these different brain areas. So with this, um, there are a couple important areas that we're going to talk about in relation to um, to the generation and the different types of sleep. So as you'll see, the forebrain, or especially the basal forebrain, uh, seems to be really important for slow wave sleep. The brainstem system, so you know, way back at the um, bottom of the brain, seems to be really important for activating and also deactivating sleep. So we'll talk about that. Um, the pons are important for um, triggering REM sleep, which of course is, you know, as we discussed, the, the sleep where you dream primarily, especially vivid dreams, that's all REM sleep. And then you also have the hypothalamatic system um, that kind of affects these other three. It helps regulate all of these other systems. So you'll get a sense of how these different systems work together uh, to create sleep and to affect sleep. So one of the things that I always was kind of interested in is how do general anesthetics work? You know, we know that obviously you can, for surgery, get a medication that um, puts you to sleep. So how does this happen? Well, there's been some studies of this and the general anesthetics that are typically used for surgery um, are, you know, are usually administered either intravenously, so through your veins, or through da um, gases. And as far as our understanding of their actions, what we see is that almost all of the general anesthetics um, really affect GABA-A receptors. So you notice with all of these, they all are either a minor agonist or a major agonist of um, GABA-A. And certainly the ones that are typically used um, for deep um, sedation, like um, this one here, are very much um, GABA-A um, agonists. So because of this, it's been hypothesized that GABA may be the neurotransmitter that the brain uses in order to produce slow-wave sleep. So we'll talk about that a little bit um, in the coming slides, but the thought is that GABA, increasing the effects of GABA, may be what causes slow-wave sleep. So much of what we've um, learned about the brain and sleep as far as what different parts are responsible for different um, aspects of sleep come as a product of um, incisions to separate parts of the brain um, where we actually do incisions to see what aspects seem to be important for different parts of sleep. So let me kind of talk you through this. So in this example, what you have here is the brain is isolated from the rest of the body by an incision between the medulla and the spinal cord. So here we're seeing, is it just the brain that's causing sleep or is it something with the rest of the body? So with this incision, what we see is animals still showed signs of sleep and wakefulness. And what it showed is that Sleep, as we know it, seems to be produced by the structures of the brain, not by other aspects of the body. If we separate the other aspects of the nervous system, we still have slow-wave sleep, REM sleep, and wake. So it doesn't seem like the rest of the body is um, crucial to have these aspects of sleep. Now you can also have different incisions and see different things. So here, we actually have a midbrain incision. So we have this incision here to um, separate the, um, the forebrain from um, the hindbrain. And here we start to see some differences. So here, um, the brain is still able to create slow wave sleep, but not REM sleep. So the thought here is that the forebrain, and as we find out later, it's really this basal forebrain, is able to create slow wave sleep, um, but not REM sleep, that must come, you know, be part of something behind the incision. When We'll talk about what that is. Looking a bit deeper at the structures that work in the forebrain, 
as I mentioned, the basal forebrain appears to be where slow wave sleep is actually generated. So why do we think this? Well, it's hypothesized because the neurons in this region become active at sleep onset, and they release GABA, which then suppresses activity in the um, tuberomammillary nucleus. Thus, we believe that anesthetic drugs actually act the same way, and that the suppression of the tuberomammillary nucleus is what leads to that general anesthesia. So now, turning to reticular formation and pons. Reticular formation, way down here at the base of the brainstem, it's actually extremely important um, because it's able to activate the cortex. So this is the part of the brain that wakes you from sleep. And damage to this part of the brain is very, very bad because you can go into a coma that you can't wake up from because it's the part of the brain that wakes the brain up from sleep. So what with this area, electrical stimulation in the area will actually wake up animals, whereas, again, lesions will promote sleep and make it so you can't wake up from the sleep. Um, with this, the forebrain and the reticular formation really seem to be the areas that guide the brain between slow-wave sleep and wakefulness. So both of those, both the forebrain and the um, the reticular formation are really important for that differentiation differentiation and passing between uh, wakefulness and sleep. The pons back here by reticular formation, so here's your reticular formation, here's pons. Um, the pons have been identified as the part of the brain that's important for generating REM sleep. Again, when we cut off at the midbrain and separate them out, uh, the brain's not able to produce REM sleep. Also, stimulating the pons will actually activate REM sleep. Relatedly, some of the neurons in the region are only active during REM sleep. They also inhibit motor neurons and keep them from firing, which is important for disabling the motor system during sleep so you don't start acting out your dreams. And lastly, just because you, you know, who doesn't love cat pictures? So the inhibited motor neurons are what cause atonia, which is a lack of muscle tension during REM sleep. So in cats, you can tell whether or not they're in REM sleep by their body posture. So the top cat is in the sphinx position, so that's this tit in here, uh, which requires muscle tension, so thus it cannot be attained during REM sleep. However, this bottom cat here could either be in slow wave sleep or REM sleep. Um, you can't tell from the posture, but we can tell from the top one that that is not REM sleep because of that sphinx position.